You know, I have to tell you, I am uh, surprised at just how well the government is actually working together to take crypto and digital assets down a peg. And uh, quite honestly, I didn't think they had it in them. So today we're going to take a look at uh, what's happening on the state level, on the federal level, and we'll take a look at the different branches that are uh, really causing a little bit of havoc in our space. But before we talk about these things, and of course, it is a little bit negative, but you have to remember that nothing is permanent. You have to remember that uh, right now, as time is moving on, we've actually been doing pretty good for this month itself. I know September has been historically, we talked about this many a time, uh, how it's been uh, not the greatest month for crypto in our market, also in the traditional finance space as well. September has been a pretty awful month, and so far, it's pretty good. 3.27% up for the month of September. And uh, historically speaking, over like 13, 14 years, we can see that usually it's a red month. So when we talk about these things, take it with a grain of salt and uh, just think about it, about how much effort and control the government has put into these efforts to cause disturbance in our market and where we're actually at right now. And also, I need you to remember one important thing. And that is that uh, take a, be attentive to the individuals and the groups that are really working out against you. There are the small scammers, the people out there taking a little bit of money. There are the people that are taking, you know, billions upon billions from you. The pawns, the artists, the schemers, and the people that are just, you know, really causing a lot of problems. And there's the people behind the power in the shadows that are really taking a big chunk out. And those are the atrociousness that is out there. So just remember that we, uh, in the crypto space, we seem to want to fight a lot, but just remember who the real people behind the power actually are. And then also, I need you to remember that everything starts at the top. I know we talk about these agencies, we talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the state level and judicial and executive and legislative branches, but you have to understand that crypto right now is not looked favorably upon from the top. And the top is the White House. And the White House right now is controlled by Democrats. I'm not a big political person, but that's just how it is right now. And there's been a couple of reports that have put, been put out. We've done a couple of videos on them. One of those being climate and energy change. This is back uh, September 2022, just about a year ago. And more recently, the Biden administration's roadmap to mitigate crypto's risks. And they talk about just how awful it is. And this was on uh, January of this year. So just remember that, that everything starts with the top. And moving forward, it's not going to change until some things change at the top. And that's really what it's going to come down to. So let's start off with the state level. So the state level in the U.S., the New York Department of Financial Services, they just put out a guideline, a ruling, pretty much delisting a couple of different cryptos for New York State. Now, why is this so important? It's not important for the general government in general. This is only has to do with New York State. However, with the problems that are going on in the branches of government and people dragging their feet and not giving regulatory clarity, some state has to step up. And unfortunately, that's New York, and they're going to kind of put a hindrance on things. Here's what's happened. So the New York Department of Financial Services updated guidance includes tightening risk assessment standards and additional requirements to its coin delisting and listing policies. Requirements tied to the, to the NYDFS requires VC entities to delist or otherwise limit New Yorkers, New Yorkers access to coins that are not included on the green list. What's that? I'll tell you in a second. The green list is a DFS controlled list of cryptos that can be listed by companies without prior DFS approval. Essentially they can say, look, we can put whatever we want in here as long as it's on this fantastic list. And the list itself previously included 25 tokens approved for custody listing or both. Those include Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, and a new PayPal dollar. For some reason, PayPal dollar got on there. And we can just see it right here that this was the old version of what was actually able to be listed without going through a lot of hoops and who laws for crypto. And approved for custody, they had Binance at one point. Binance USD, 
Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Gemini Dollar, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, Pax Gold. And of course, for listing, Binance, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Pax Gold, blah, blah, blah. And now they are reducing that down to just a handful, which is this. Now it's just eight. And it's pretty much Bitcoin, Ethereum, Gemini Dollar, PayPal Dollar, Pax, Pax Gold, a couple stable coins, that's it. So they're really just going, look, uh, we don't know what's going on with crypto. We don't want to deal with it. And uh, we're going to move in the direction of safety and not allow these to be listed evergreen. And of course, the delisting process will take a little bit of an account there. And, every, and you can just see that as time goes on, things just shrink and shrink and shrink. And again, I think everything comes up from the top. Now, how, does it, how has this affected crypto in general? Like, doing pretty good. Right now, everything's up. So, I mean, Bitcoin's up 1% in 24 hours. Seven days, 7%. Uh, Dogecoin, which I guess is some issue, still up 1% today. Solana, Tron, Polkadot. Where's Litecoin? Litecoin's up 5%, 14%. So, again, when all these things that are happening and you're worried about it and you're going to hear these articles and you're going to hear these things talk about it and you need to get some type of reference to what's happening, you have to understand the government has its job. They try to do this thing. But in all honesty, crypto is inevitable moving forward. The things that concerns me is things like Operation Choke Point 2.0 and those types of things. So that takes a look at the state level. Now let's take a look at the federal level. And we'll take a look at the legislative branch. The legislative branch of the government. There's three branches. You got legislative, which makes the laws. Executive, which carries out the laws. And judicial, which evaluates. So legislative, the ones that makes the laws, that would be Congress. I know Gary Gensler think he, he thinks he actually makes the laws. He does not. He's supposed to carry them out. And judicial evaluates the laws, such as like the Supreme Court executive being the White House. So when this came out, and this is going to be another shock to the system, people are like, oh, my God, no, this is awful. Nine U.S. senators publicly back Elizabeth Warren's crypto bill. Look, I don't know what the problem is with Elizabeth Warren and crypto. I know that she has an issue with, uh, with centralized exchanges. So do I. And I think so do you. I don't think we like the centralized exchanges that commingle our funds and screw us over and perform Ponzi schemes like with SPF and FTX. Of course, there was also the Voyager, the Celsius, and the BlockFi's out there. So I think on that page, we, we totally are on track. The problem is I don't see the rationale for what she's talking about as far as like Bitcoin, we have to get rid of it, and it's just awful. So you're going to hear, see these articles, and here's what's happening. So there's a press release on Warren's official Senate webpage, and they named Democratic Party. And I want you to, to understand why I say this and why it's written here. Democratic Party senators, Democratic Party senators, birds of a feather, rule together. And that's what uh, Democrats usually do. That's what Republicans do. They're in their, their group and their system. So when they come together, of course they're going to stick together. So you got nine. You got Gary Peters, Durbin, Smith, Shahan Casey, Blumenthal, Bennett. I don't know. I don't even know these people along with independent senators Angus King as those who joined the bipartisan coalition supporting the bill. To be quite honest, and it, it, it talks about how awful it is and, uh, you know, just it's going to, you know, really be, a, really be a shock to the system. But you have to remember something. You need a majority vote. And for senators in the United States, we have 50 states still. And you get two senators per state. And for them to be majority, you got to hit 50, if my math is correct. And of course, on those 50, the person that breaks that vote would be the vice president if there is a stalemate, which there is right now, because right now, the majority party is Democrats with 48 seats, minority Republicans are 50 seats, and there's two independents, the ones that we just, and one of them we just named right there, but they all caucus, so they all vote with the Democrats. So you have 100. So right now, yes, Senator Elizabeth Warren does have, for some reason, nine people in her pocket, and she's going to come out and talk about an anti-crypto army. But we'll see how it all plays out 
And you have to understand, as time has gone on, I don't think people are very trusting of some of the things that are being said by certain senators and moving forward. And also remember that next year, specifically November 2024, we're going to have an election. And I don't know which way that election will go, but I know that Congress, assuming the House of Representatives, is already controlled by, the, by Republicans. And I might suspect that also it'll fall from the Democrats as well. So we'll see if this actually goes through, if she can get a majority. But again, you have to understand there are minutia and different parts to this. And just because she has more people who she has picked up doesn't mean that everybody wants this to actually happen. And that would take care of part the legislative. Now let's go talk about the executive, Gary, and the SEC. Gary's got a problem, and Gary keeps losing cases. And Gary's missed a lot. We all know that. And Gary, so far, the only thing he's really protected us from so far is staking with Kraken. So good job for you, Gary. I get it. But now he's going to dump a dead horse with this Binance US. And I have no problems with this. I honestly don't have a problem. But it just seems like because you, you, know, you, you sat down with SPF, you sat down with, with, with FTX, you have a lot of things that are in the closet with those <laughs> entities. And now it's all about, we're going to protect you from this way. And we're going to protect you from influencers. And we're going to protect you from this. And I'm like, where were you before? What were you doing? Anyhow, uh, SEC rips into Binance US over shaky asset custody. I, I just want to ask a question. Does anybody use Binance US here? Does anybody use it? Is anybody looking to, to use it? Is anybody like, I got to get into that? Well, whatever it is, right now the SEC is trying to tear apart Binance US. Thanks. And I could read the whole article, but it's quite boring. What it really comes down to is this. The, regula the regulator, SEC, accused Binance SEC of inconsistent representations about key facts, slow rolled small productions of documents and information, and stole walled on entire categories of info that would likely shed light on its shaky assertions concerning the custody of customer assets. Really what it come down to is this, is the SEC says, look, there's no way you guys resolve it, and we're going to prove it, and we're going to ask for depositions, and we're going to grind you to a halt, and we're going to actually shut you down, Binance US, which, I mean, if they do, they do. I, could care, I couldn't care less. And then they'll probably go after uh, CZ Binance in some way, shape, or form. I will say this, though. And before anybody says, that's FUD, that's FUD, that's FUD. It may be. I don't know. I don't have any insider information on Binance US. But it is interesting. This is a list of key execs to, live Bi to leave Binance in 2023. And I know Binance has a lot of people working for it. So I'm not talking about the volume of people. It's the, it's the people in the positions that have left. On July 6, you had Matt Price, Senior Director of Global Investigations and Intelligence and Binance. He's gone. July 6, Steve Milton, Global Vice President of Marketing. Also July 6, Han, General Counsel, left. Patrick Hillman, Chief Strategy Officer. July 7, Steve Christie, Senior VP for Compliance. August 31st, Leon Fung, Head of Asia Pacific. September 4th, Mayor Kamat, Product Lead and then some other people, I don't know who they are. And then also, just a couple of days ago, uh, the CEO stepped down, and, you know, CZ's like, look, he stepped down because he needed a break. <laughs> I mean, sure, that's, I guess that's what happened. When, when CEOs and, and head of global strategy start stepping down, and, and the main guy's like, it's okay, I mean, I don't know. It just looks a little suspicious. And uh, we'll see how it all plays out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, CZ is just like, this is just fun and whatever it is. But, you know, I've, uh, I'm quite a cynic these days. Behind every cynic is a broken optimist. And that would be me. And then lastly, uh, congratulations to BitBoy. I just, this just came across my desk. I thought that was quite interesting that uh, Ben Armstrong was dismissed from the FTX case. And then there's three celebrities that settled. Now, I want you to notice that he was dismissed from the case. He didn't settle. He was dismissed. And I don't really know what's happening, but I think um, on this situation, 
I remember watching some of Ben's videos about him talking about FTX and what had happened and the things that he got behind it for months and months and months before it actually happened. So, I mean, there's that. So I'm, uh, I guess that's a step in the right direction for, for Ben and what's happening. But just to sum all this up in, in, uh, to say very, very easily, over the next couple months and things that are going to happen, it's going to be kind of a roller coaster ride and it's going to be very bumpy. It's going to be kind of crappy, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, when I got in 2017 and 2018, uh, the White House wasn't talking about crypto. There were no major institutions getting into digital assets. There wasn't a uh, massive uh, fund talking about how Bitcoin is digital gold. There wasn't legislation that was actually being approved in different parts of Europe and Southeast Asia. There was a lot of things that could have gone wrong that didn't. And uh, these days, I know that we look at these things, we're like, oh, this will never come back. But in all honesty, everything we just talked about, look at the things that are being built and the different price action, actually, that's doing pretty well, and how things are progressing forward. I have no doubt where things are going. I still know when we'll get there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, all that good stuff. Now, if you'd like to stick around, we'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. Uh, if you got to take off, take off. Thanks for stopping by. And that is it.